After winning the Super Bowl, the most valuable player is always asked, what are you going to do next? And you know what the response is? I'm going to Disney World. Here's what Ken Bishop said after signing his contract to become NASBA's president and CEO. I'm going to Disney World. Let's do it again. I'm going to Disney World. Yes, Ken, like you, we're thrilled to be at Disney World here at the Swan and Dolphin Resort to focus on what we can do to support state boards, to focus on what we can do to accomplish NASBA's mission, and to focus on enjoying our time here in Orlando together this week. Later today, you'll hear that NASBA made over a million dollars last year, and that's good. But what's really important is how do you want to see these resources used? Very often, I got to walk into Ken, Colleen, or Tom's office and say, I have a great idea. And you saw some of that, which we did at the regional meetings and had fun with this summer. At the Philadelphia and Anchorage meetings, we brought you not a Super Bowl, but a Goldfish Bowl. And I asked you to join me and offer up, what do you think? If you remember, the request was, what one idea do you have that would benefit NASBA? One idea that would benefit your state board, or all 55 member boards, or your candidates, students, or the public you serve back home. We received over 100 suggestions. Each submission was passed on to the respective NASBA staff member or committee. Some, some were like the one given to the Communications Committee to produce a 30-minute video of NASBA's committee activities as well as NASBA's products and services. An idea was passed on to Dan Dustin and to the regional directors to develop a plan of immediate outreach to new State Board staff members and to the C CPE committee was passed on the suggestion to develop a uniform, management si uniform CPE management system for state board's use. But the question of diversity was repeated in a number of submissions. The question is, do each of you and our members back home have ample opportunity to serve NASBA? They'll drive you crazy over the Magic Kingdom with the song, it's a small, small world. Tom is dying. He thinks I'm going to sing it. <laughs> NASBA is a small group of leaders. You were handpicked to serve the people of your state, and I know you're dedicated to your responsibilities. Your willingness to serve is a precious resource that NASBA must manage with care. So I'm appointing five members to gather and to write a report to new chair Galen Hansen that will identify and rank any limitations or barriers for service in our committees, the board of directors, or external appointments that NASBA makes, and to make recommendations to expand opportunities for all members to be the face of NASBA. This group will convene, as promised, at Louise's newly renovated offices in New York City in the coming weeks. Y'all know my favorite philosopher is Yogi Berra, who once said, the future ain't what it used to be. So this summer, we looked into the future, three to five years out. It was a perfect time to do a strategic plan. In front of you is our new mission-driven, member-focused strategic plan. If NASB is really to be mission-driven and member-focused, we needed a plan of strategies written by you, the members. So four NASBA staff and 11 volunteers have presented to me a strategic plan to offer to the Board of Directors. It begins with a new mission statement. You see, my old laminated mission statement card is sort of torn, tattered, and it was tired. Time for an upgrade, don't you think? The new mission statement is to enhance the effectiveness and to advance the common interest of boards of accountancy. Let me demonstrate. 
When we completed the enforcement guide this year, and as we roll out new investigator, a new investigator training program, NASBA enhances, enhances your state board's effectiveness. When we respond to the PCOB about auditor rotation, and when 30 volunteers participated in writing objections to legislation that would reduce standards required of emerging growth, co growth companies when issuing initial public offerings, NASBA advanced the common interest of member boards. So there's a new card with the new mission statement. Does it work for you? Good, the board of directors approved it. Selling the new mission statement to the board was easy. But then the rest of it, our vision, our values, whoa, and what I think is 27 listings of objectives, selling that to the board was quite, of a, cha quite a challenge. I said to the strategic planning group, what kind of salesman do you think I am? I read through this. The board will never buy this, I told them. It does not contain the word robust. There's no mention of thought leaders. They even extracted the word vibrant. It's some sort of throwback, I said. Has anyone in the room today seen a strategic plan since like the 90s that didn't have a vibrant this or a robust that? But guess what? I guess I can sell ice cubes to Eskimos because the board bought it. And let me tell you why. Ed Barnicott, who led the strategic plan group, insisted that every objective in this mission-driven plan had to be specific, measurable, attainable, and realistic. And as every objective passed all four of Ed's tests, it went on the board. If it didn't meet all four of those tests, stayed on the floor. These features of accountability are important because it gives you sort of a warranty on this plan. Ken, Galen, and future chairs will challenge all the staff and volunteers for years to come with what we call the mission question. Does every product, service, and initiative that NASBA undertakes affirmatively or positively answer the question of does it enhance the effectiveness of your state board, or does it advance the common interest of all member boards? So now it's up to you to hold NASBA accountable in tying all we do, whether done by staff or volunteers, to one of the strategies listed in this plan. You know what Yogi said when asked what makes a good manager? He said, a good ball club. I used that line at the AICPA Council the other day. They didn't stop laughing for five minutes. <laughs> well, maybe one minute. At noon today, you'll see one of the Disney managers tell us about their behind the scenes team. And you'll see over the next three days what a fabulous team Ken has assembled. Tom. Katie and Louise have produced a wonderful program for us to enjoy here in Orlando this week. But let me tell you about the impact some of you as regulators make. In Fairbanks, Alaska, Sandy Wilson, she's a mother, a grandmother, a teacher, a producer, a director, an auditor, and a leader. As the former Pacific Regional Director for NASBA, and most recently as the Chair of your Examiner, Examination Review Board, as we saw in the video this summer of the ERB, Sandy is a teacher, auditor, performer, director, writer, and leader. I spoke with Sandy last week to congratulate her on an award she received from the Alaskan Society of CPAs. She shares her talents because she's good at it. She likes it, and she appreciates public service. Westfield, New Jersey is where Bob Cagnasola works as a managing partner of a small CPA firm, and from where he served the people of New Jersey for over 23 years on their state board. 
why would Bob do that? Because he's good at it. And like you, Bob likes public service. Last year, the Virginia governor appointed Andrea Kilmer to Virginia Board of Accountancy. Andrea works in Virginia Beach overseeing 1,000 employees. She serves on the governing body of Old Dominion University, was named the Small Business CFO of the Year in 2009, and received the Silver Fawn, the highest award a lady can receive from the Boy Scouts of America. What a wonderful leader and public servant we are honored to call a fellow regulator. So whether you've been on your board for over 20 years, or you're like one of our newest members, Jeremy Watson, who's here with us today. He's a CPA with Jones & Company from Jonesboro, Arkansas. But he served the folks in Arkansas's regular for just two months. So whether you're long-term or new, NASBA is here for you. We are here to honor and support your commitment and your dedication to maintain a vibrant profession and to protect the public it serves. If Paul Miller couldn't get y'all to ask questions, I don't know that I will, but I'll be glad to field any questions or any comments at this time. Very good. <laughs> 